Hi everyone. Uh, next up we have Human Resource Management in Open Source Communities by Daniel Gruno. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, this is going to be a somewhat short presentation. Uh, I'll just show the what it's going to be about. It's going to be about what is human resource management and then the four pillars of human resource management and a uh, summary. And uh, I just want to remind you this is not a lecture, it's hopefully a discussion between uh, me and you. Uh, I expect some participation and the reason why I do that is it's much more fun. And secondly, I, I lost my slides, so <laughs> I, <laughs> I need some help. Uh, <laughs> so if um, I, I did make some additional slides, but this was uh, pretty much all I had yesterday which is uh, not a lot. So um, in, in all seriousness, um, ACRM is the art of mediating between corporate and employee interests. It's, uh, it's usually uh, some sort of legal department in most companies where uh, you deal with uh, personal relationships between uh, employees, hiring, firing, um, contracts, and, and so on. But it's, in its essence, human resource management is not that. It's uh, more of a, um, how do you put it? Um, well, I can put it like this. Uh, <laughs> we try to align the interests of the company with the interests of the employees, uh, which is basically, uh, on, on one hand, we want to ensure that the company is profitable. But on the other hand, we also want to ensure that the employees are happy. So it's. Um, sort of like being a representative for the uh, employees, but also for the company and, and trying to mix that and see uh, if we can work something out. Um, I know that the ASF is not a company, so you, you can't exactly say if your employees are happy a company benefit from it, um, because ASF is not a company. and. We don't really work for the ASF. We work for the different projects within the ASF. So what we can say is that if your committers are happy, your project benefits from it. And if your project is thriving, in this case, the project is the company, uh, your committers will benefit from it as well. Um, and this is because uh, one does not simply construct a project. It's, uh, it grows from the mutual benefit that exists between the efforts of the committers and the benefits they gain from committing. Um, yeah, that's a, a, about what human resource management is, is about in an open source um, community. The four or five pillars of human resource management is usually hiring people educating them, retaining them, and unfortunately firing them. And I've put mediating in the middle. Uh, I was going to talk quite a lot about mediating uh, and coaching, but uh, I don't have all my fancy slides, so I'm sorry for that. Uh, so let's talk about hiring. Um, I can ask you what uh, motivates a future employee to go look for a job at the big company, if, if anyone wants to step up and, and say something. If you could go to the microphone, please. Then you can use your personal experience if you like. Okay. Uh, so the glib answer is money. Um, but usually, um, yes. you know, working on a project that you, or a pro, you know, in my case, literally an Apache project that you find interesting, but, you know, if you're um, in a I'm, different I'm area. Talking about, I'm talking about uh, within a company. Okay. Why would you, you seek employment within a company? Why would I seek? Uh, because the work interests me uh, work in a broader me. sense and, you know, benefits and money. Benefits and money. So. Okay. Anybody else? No? Well, okay. As you said, money is the, um, what motivates a lot of people. You need to pay your bills. Uh, Igor? Um, the work environment itself. Like, um, I wouldn't go for all the money to a company where it's uh, simply not productive to work with uh, the single individuals there. So yeah, that's, that's one big part of the reason to go to a certain company. 
Okay, but you, you'd have to assume that you actually know about the work, work environment before you y seek employment. Yeah, but um, usually you get a feel for that in, in an interview or from the people who are trying to hire you. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, but you know, uh, you know it's it's a lie, and you know it's exagger uh, exaggeration. So from that, you can um, tune tune in and see. Okay, that's that's about the level of uh, <laughs> horribleness that I expect in the first month, and this is what's following. <laughs> So what I actually wanted to discuss, if I had had my uh, original presentation, was uh, what motivates one to become a committer. Um, because as I've put here first, the, usually what motivates an employee to go look for a job is money. You need to pay your bills. Um, but if you're a committer, well, at least within the ASF, uh, you don't get any money. So uh, why do you want to be a committer? Uh, solving problems is one of the very important issues. You, you see something and you just have to solve it. And the only way you can solve, you can solve it is by becoming a committer. It's also prestige. Um, personally, I, I think it's very prestigious to be a part of a, the committer group or the PMC if you are so lucky. Um, and, and, and doing something that matters, a purpose in life is just tied into the, the identity. Um, I think a lot of committers can identify with the project. They, they are not the project, but in a way they pour so much effort into the project that they sort of become the project themselves, uh, which can be good, it can be bad. Uh, and finally, some recognition. And uh, I would like to, to ask if anyone uh, has uh, ever sought to become a committer in order to, to gain some recognition? Or if you, there's no one here. Igor, thankfully. No, I've uh, actually talked uh, this very morning to somebody who uh, was working really, really hard on, I think, flex or sling and became a committer and then their activity dropped. Mm -hmm. So since then, he. Uh, did I think two commits? That's that's what he said. So he was like, my my personal goal was really becoming a committer. <laughs> <laughs> you succeeded. Okay, but that that's part of the the prestige of it. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons. Um, what I also wanted to discuss is uh, what um, I can see. We have some sort of young people here and sort of old people. Uh, so what I was interested in is if, if any, of, any of you think that the, the generations matter, is, if it's a, a generational aspect that uh, sort of makes us become a committer, uh, we know that, uh, well, hippies probably don't become committers. Um, <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> You're a hippie. <laughs> uh, but, but what I... I originally wanted to say about this is that uh, different generations have different aspects in life that are important to them. Uh, for some, it's it's money or career or uh, a highly prestigious job. Uh, but what we're seeing in the uh, what's called Generation Y, which is the guys and girls that are in their twenties about now is that uh, they have a more altruistic approach to the world. They actually want to help uh, make it a better world uh, and not really get paid. So what I'm hoping is that we'll see a, a great influx of committers um, <clears throat> because of, of this, uh, the new way that uh, Generation Y works. Um, which brings us to uh, how do we actually hire a committer? Can we can we actually can we, can we talk about hiring a committer, or or not? Is it uh, well? Uh, what does it mean in an ASF context? Because mostly when we get a new committer, it's what we would in uh, the corporate world call an unsolicited application. 
or we are not actually seeking a new employee, but someone says, hey, I, uh, I want to work for you or with you, solving some problems, uh, and they want to help fix it. Um, I was about to say, oh, Igor, if you want to say something, be my guest. Well, in a company, you usually have a limited budget and you have um, more or less clear goals. Uh, but in an open source project, um, you have limited budget and unclear goals. And the limited budget is the time of your volunteers. So the more of, the, uh, of that time, the more of those volunteers you have, the happier your project is potentially going to be if um, you listened to all the tracks and the community uh, to all the talks on the community track and uh, get your community into the right direction at least. But generally, yes, you want those people in, I suppose, I yeah, think. But, but there can also be some, some caveats, uh, which I am, think I will be discussing in a second. Uh, well, okay, yeah, if, if you have some um, experience about active hiring in the ASF, you can uh, share them and by active hiring I mean a proxy going out saying we need some commuters if you're interested please contact us at this or this address uh, and I don't really know if any projects uh, are using active hiring so that's sort of why I'm asking if any of you are uh, within a project that uses active hiring um, no not at all. Okay, let's go to the next slide, uh, is, uh, which is how can we um, actively make people join our projects? Because uh, sometimes, it's um, most of the time, it's, it's it's okay that people they join whenever they feel like it. But if you have a, for example, a very important bug you need fixed, or you have a release cycle that says we need to push this release. Uh, it could be a, a good idea to actively go out and seek uh, new, I'm gonna say employees, but, but new committers. Uh, and we can do that by sharing our, there we go, by sharing our own motivations and benefits uh, from joining the ASF community, um, which is again this, um, solving problems, the prestige, the recognition, the identity, uh, doing something that matters. Um, I, I don't see any projects actually using this and going out and saying, this is what, well, we, we have Isabel's uh, I'm a Committer Now What uh, presentation which talks about uh, a, a bit about what happens if you're a committer, but we generally don't have projects going out saying this is the experience I had when I was a committer and this is why you should be a committer as well. Um, and and how exactly would we get the word out? That's, uh, if, if, yes, Shane? So if I can do this without feedbacking. So one thing that does, th this is really a per project thing. So it's really up to the projects themselves. So that, exactly. that means it's totally, you know, some projects do a good job a lot of it is just all the other things in the community track of you know having a decent website, being helpful on the lists when somebody asks a dumb question, give them a nice answer, assume that they were really trying. So that's part of it. The other one is um, I don't know if people have looked at Open Hatch. So Open Hatch is another organization that has um, a bunch of sort of basically open source and computing training videos, and then they say if your project wants to get listed, go put a listing up and say hey. Here's a tiny little bug that somebody could look at. Here's a little task that we have. So they have a sort of free-for-all way with, with training included of, you know, where projects can put up a bug saying, hey, we want somebody to come fix this. And then a good project will then follow up with that person and try and get them to actually engage in the project. So there's that. And there are also a bunch of bug bounty programs, you know, either from independent companies. Um, so one question in general is, why aren't there more Apache projects who actually do that, which exactly. is interesting. But the second question is, uh, uh, I came for human resources management, which immediately makes me think of the dichotomy between commercial and community. So in some of these cases, how can we 
effectively let these commercial companies who have their independent goals and independent resources that they have things they want to do that are, tra are not visible to us along with our communities that want to do this kind of stuff all together that we don't know until we do it. So I think that's another interesting aspect of this in terms of the, you can, you can pay for bug bounties or you can spend the effort to go out and make it easy for people to come in, right? I don't know if people have thoughts about that. Yes, Igor, again. <laughs> come on, come on, please. Um, let's see if I, um, a couple of years, or was it just a, a half year back, uh, Greg Stein uh, was talking about what the board does for the ASF and he compared it to a very, very, very good manager of his. And so on the first couple of slides that you had, it was, uh, you know, making people sort of happy and uh, that's basically what, uh, what, what sprang uh, to my mind when, when you mentioned it. Uh, sort of, is this um, the board's job? No. <laughs> He's shaking his head. <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, like, uh, but yeah, uh, what I mean is also this, uh, this thing, like connecting projects to uh, in, uh, infrastructure, connecting them to commercial sites that are out there that can do things. So one place where a lot of active hiring takes place is the incubator and as projects, att as podlings attempt to acquire critical mass. So to answer Igor's question, no, I don't think this is the board's job at all. Um, the board governs the organization. It doesn't, you know, we're supposed to do the work around here. And so, the, you know, the, the the people who facilitate this process are, for example, community development, ComDev, where there's an effort made to collect best practices, redistribute them out, help, you know, at ConCom that makes events like this one where projects get together and people can cross-fertilize in some sense of the term. But, uh, well, should we do, for example, active hiring within the ASF at, at uh, conferences? Would that be a good idea or a, a, a terrible idea? Um, I think it happens. Uh, if you go, to, uh, if the talks here that are about particular projects have a strange tendency for the people speaking, say, you know, and would you like to join in and help? <laughs> so I, I think these conferences already function in those terms. I think some projects show up and give a talk very much oriented towards seeing who they can suction up, and some projects, you know, don't have any volunteers who are who, who come up with that. Okay. The, the next aspect of, of active hiring is called proactive hiring, which is basically um, well, hiring when you don't need to because you might need to in the future. Uh, this is sort of new within the, the company world um, and it has the benefits that, well, uh, you can see this is a uh, general chart of, of, uh, sort of uh, employment rates and usually uh, when the employment rates are low, that's when companies are hiring. They need the job, and employee rate uh, drops. And then at some point, they don't need the workers anymore, and it rises, and people are pretty much desperate. So what some companies are doing now is they are consistently hiring when the employment rate is high. And the, the benefit is that you get an extremely loyal uh, employee because you have in a way helped him or her uh, into a job and was otherwise impossible uh, and as a result you, you get an employee that usually lasts quite a lot longer than um, regular employees uh, because they feel grateful um, and I was sort of wondering if, if we can talk about this uh, job creation cycles in open source uh, if anyone has any idea of uh, when do we actually need committers, when do we not need committers? Uh, nobody. What about, for example, release cycles? Can we talk about release cycles as being uh, the, the unemployment rate when we are close to pushing a new release, we need uh, more committers and when we are in a law between them, we do not, Shane? So again, the, 
first thing that comes to my mind is this is per project. So, and that totally depends on how that community exactly. is structured, what technology they're using, our, our market forces making it, do they really need to move forward quickly? So that's a little bit hard to, for me to at least imagine. I think about it from the foundation point of view and we don't necessarily have that, but, but actually we do when you say, what about release cycles? So we don't actually need a committer to do a release cycle. What, we, what, what I think of as a committer is somebody new who's gonna you know, add new features and fix bugs and do code. What we need for release cycles is a release manager. Somebody who's dependable, actually gets it done and pays attention to details. They don't actually need to commit as long as somebody else can you know, check in the version string for them. So it's really the organizational person who will show up and make sure you know, in the space of a few weeks instead of you know, six months like some committers might let it stretch out to. It actually, the little details get done. So that, I think, is the one thing from the foundation point of view that we could do a better job at, is how do we grow new organizational volunteers? How do we grow this kind of person, who pays attention to the details, and even though it's not sexy, and it's not cool code, actually does the crap? And then how can we grow them into people at the foundation level? So there are a whole bunch of places in the foundation level where, you know, for brand management, it's really me. Um, I, there are a few, there are a few Apache members who have really stepped up and helped out with basic questions. But at, at the at the real level, it's really me. Um, the same in in other things. The same with with infra. We have infra contractors, but there's a limit to what they can do because they need to do it reliably. And there are plenty of projects who could use all this extra stuff. How can we get people who are reliable enough to help in those areas that really are cross project? So that's one thing I'm interested in. Uh, I don't know how to do it yet. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna skip my mumbling and go to uh, another point, which is the next uh, pillar in the human resource man management, which is educating or education. Um, why would we need education within the ASF? Um, that's a good question. Why do we need to educate our committers? We do that because we need to retain the knowledge that we possess as a group of committers, um, and someday Mr. Genius might just leave the group and say, I'm done, and he might just have uh, committed a, a large patch or a new module that is really, really good, but there's no one left to maintain it, so we have to dump it. And lastly, because we want to grow as a community. So the question is, how do we educate each other within a community? Uh, and I'm not talking about school, but I'm talking about how do we take the information that each committer has about a project and make it shared. Um, and while we do so by identifying and separating the individual tacit knowledge that each committer has from the explicit knowledge, and by explicit knowledge I mean documentation, for example, where it's written down that this is how it works. Uh, there's a great difference between what uh, explicit knowledge is and what tacit knowledge is in that tacit knowledge only exists within the committer and if the committer leaves, it's, uh, well, too bad for us. Um, so we need to work on making a, uh, the, the tacit knowledge explicit and we need to work on making it shared knowledge. And we can do so in a number of ways. Uh, I don't know if any, well, I know a few of you were at the bar camp uh, last night, which is uh, one of the, well, if it's a decent bar camp, it's one of the ways to uh, share knowledge. Um, and it's sort of like this uh, thing I call the clothes pin round, which is uh, something we used to do at my university where we would all get two clothes pins and we would write down some subjects of interest, what are we interested in, uh, what do we want to learn about, uh, and then everyone would go and put a clothespin on which, whichever subject they were interested in, and then another one on another subject, and then you would basically form groups uh, from that and discuss. And I've, uh, well, I've sort of seen it, it at there's a path to come with the traffic server uh, community, which is really 
gotten together and, and discussed a lot of things and shared uh, a lot of knowledge that was uh, previously tacit. Uh, so again, I, I, I suppose the Pachycon is also a way of educating us. Um, and if there are any suggestions as to how you can uh, educate committer, I would be very glad if you could step up. No. Okay, well, let's just move on. Uh, the third point is retaining a committer. Um, retention in a, in a community is quite important. It makes the projects far more stable if you don't have committers coming in and going out. Uh, it ensures that we learn from our mistakes because the older committers will usually know that this and this bug exists because we did something bad and if you they just leave and a new committer comes, comes in, it's probably not going to be fixed that easy because they don't have the past mistakes to learn from that the, the old committers have unless of course we do a, a good job at educating our committers and sharing the knowledge that we have. Um, it makes progress far less expensive, uh, which is sort of the same thing in, uh, in a real company. Uh, usually mm -hmm. it, it, it requires a year's salary just to hire a new person. And you can sort of uh, draw an analog to, to uh, hiring or well. Uh, what do you call it, um, adding a new committer. It takes a great deal of time, uh, both from the committer and from the old committers, to uh, get things set up and say, this is how we vote, this is how we backport uh, bug fixes, this is how we add new stuff. Um, so it's, uh, it's a good idea to, to maintain well, I'm sure that, that committers are retained. Um, but the, well, the question is, how do we retain committers? Um, I don't really have an answer to that because there are no monetary ties. They uh, can still pay for their uh, meals and their rent and such if they choose not to be a committer anymore. Um, they can leave if they want to. Uh, we don't have any rules saying you must be a committer for a year, uh, fortunately. Um, so how do we retain committers? Uh, well, we can do by ensuring that the cost of leaving outweighs the benefits. And by this I mean the prestige, the recognition, the identity, getting things done is what usually matters for a committer. And if this outweighs the, well, the reduction in workload that you get from uh, from leaving a community, you are more likely to stay. Um, but we, we probably don't enforce this, uh, and, and by enforce I mean, um, in for example, a, a project group, we, we, we rarely see someone saying, you did a great job, you did a great job. Uh, I recognize that you have done this patch and this patch and this patch. So there's, well, not a lot of recognition for each committer except for the fact that you could put your name in a change log and say, I fixed this bug, but maybe someone will notice, maybe someone won't notice. Um, we don't, well, at least in the projects I'm in, we, we, we don't really have, uh, someone going around saying, I have actually noticed that you have made a contribution. I think it's valuable. Uh, and I think we sort of need to, to actually do that. Um, Igor, if you want to say something again. Um, one way of critique, positive and negative, that we have at our disposal is um, we have commit mails. And uh, what most often happens is uh, when everything is fine, nobody comments but when something isn't there's there's going to be someone and i hope someone reading the commit mails step up and say okay this this looks odd or there's a bug in here but in the same way it would also be nice if from time to time you got an email that hey that looks awesome thank you for this fix so if you if you can do that if you can really 
Uh, I mean, I don't know how many of you have been in Noreen's talk, but yeah, basically, you know, some, some positiveness, bring, bring that on the list too. Yes, it, it, it is a dice with two sides. On the one hand, we, we like to be praised for the work we do, but it's not about being praised, it's about being recognized for the work you do, which means when you do something good, you, you get a nod saying this is good. When you do something bad, you get a nod saying this is bad. But most importantly, you get a nod saying, I actually saw you did something. Um, and that's quite important in, in retaining commuters. Uh, and I don't think we do that enough. Um, except if there's a bug and it's a bad bug, we, we, we get someone saying this is bad. Um, OK, I'm, oh. Uh, and the fourth point is firing a committer. Can we talk about firing a committer? Can we fire a committer? Uh, are we talking about revoking commit rights? Do we mean emeritus status? Um, yes, uh, thank you. Um, and what benefits can we get from letting a committer go? Uh, it's an interesting question. Well, we can get less clutter on the mailing list. <laughs> if it's a very annoying committer. Uh, and we need to remember, and I'm going to play the devil's advocate, that merit is not always eternal. Um, or is it? Um, it'll, it'll get a leaner chain of command if you don't have tens of thousands of inactive committers that you depend on to provide a vote or comments for something when they're not going to do it. Um, what we have in the, I think, in the, the, the traffic server project is that if you had not committed something within the last six months, year, year okay, you're asked if you want to continue uh, being on the PNC or if you want to say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to step down. And I see a lot of projects that have this, once you get in, you're in and you can just do nothing. And the question is, does this uh, encourage people, does this motivate people that you don't have to do anything? Or is it better to say, well, we'll at least ask you, if you haven't done anything in the last year, we'll at least ask you, are you still interested in it? And maybe this could pique uh, an interest in, in, in getting people motivated. Maybe it'll make them say, oh, uh, go F yourself, I, I'm not going to do anything. Um, so what I'm, I'm, I'm actually saying is, uh, would it make sense to make a set of rules that, for example, can slim down the PMC or commit roster, and uh, what would we gain or lose from it? Yes, Rich? So there's nothing to be gained by removing somebody from a commit list. There's no overhead in having them on the commit list. But it, it goes back to recognizing what people do if, if you say, hey, we haven't heard from you in a little while. Are you still there? What what are you dealing with these days? Even if their answer is, no, I'm not interested, reaching out to people and seeing if they, making them feel that they're still part of the community can be very valuable, even in just, you know, if, even if it's just a tiny percent of those people that say, yeah, I guess it's nice that somebody noticed I was gone. Exactly. Um, well, I'm almost, well, I'm not out of time, but I'm almost out of slides, so I'm going to, finish up. The, the last element that I was supposed to be discussing here was uh, mediating, uh, which is important even within the ASF. Um, I believe that mediation and coaching can help improve both the social relations but also improve the project. Um, so don't just write minus one or plus one. You should actually put yourself in the position of the others and try to see things from their perspective. Because uh, situations Usually, that's what, for example, systemic coaching says, that from an individual's point of view, your reasoning always makes 100% uh, sense. Uh, other people just might not know why exactly it makes sense. Um, so if you have some, some troubles, you should, well, try to put yourself in, in, in the uh, position and see why does this make sense. Instead of saying, this does not make sense, let's have a, a great argument, uh, you need to remember that this does make sense in the eye of the beholder. 
you may just not know why exactly it makes sense. Uh, I was going to enter a lot of fancy stuff about systemic coaching, uh, but I well yeah, lost my slides, so <laughs> <laughs> so I'm out of slides. Uh, if there are any questions, comments, stuff you want to say, you can say it now. We've actually spent 35 minutes, which is quite impressive. I, I think I like the idea of mediation in terms of when there is a discussion that isn't being productive and going to consensus well. Um, I think that would be a good call to everybody who comes to sessions like this is when you see that in one of your projects or even on a project that you're not part of but you use, then if you can be a thoughtful voice, step in. Um, even if you don't know the details, if you can just be the thoughtful voice of, hey, okay, time out, everybody take 24 hours off because nothing in the open source needs to get decided that quickly. And gosh, I'm looking at this and here's what I think. Um, even if you don't know the details, if you can, you put that in a thoughtful way, that often can be a, a voice that helps other community members who should have been trying to help improve the situation come in to do it. Um, and I think it would be neat to figure out a way that when Apache projects use each other, that we can get them to other project members from different projects to help out doing that. Because sometimes it feels, when, when things get really bad, that the project ends up, or someone ends up going to the board, um, which I can guarantee you, the first time that you do that, they're going to say, your community, figure it out. And the second time, they're going to say, no, really, you don't get how to figure it out, then you need to figure out how to figure it out. Um, and if you go back to them, and, and they will read your mailing lists, along with a number of other, other members who will also be reading your mailing list now, um, sometimes a few people will independently come help, sometimes not. If you go back to the board again and say, no, we really need help, um, I assure you, you will not like the way that they help you. <laughs> so it will work out in the long run, but it will be extremely painful, because the board does not, you know, they, for, for, for good or for bad, most of the directors that we have currently and have had in the past expect communities to be responsible adults and work it through. And if they can't, then the board is, you know, doesn't know what the heck your project's about. And other than reading the past, you know, two weeks of list mail, don't know who you all are, a few of you because you're members or whatever. Um, and the board will say, okay, here's the fundamentals. This is wrong. We're changing this. And it won't be what you thought of, but it will make something move forward. So that's the only okay. point about the board. Well, uh, I'll just say thank you for still being here. <laughs> and, and that's about it. So thank you. <laughs>